Hey guys, N0ECK here. So today we're going to build a couple antennas and we're going to test them. When you search on YouTube or Google and look for the best 2 meter antenna, there's a good chance you'll find a few articles saying the J-Pole is fantastic. And uh, there are a lot of people that say the exact opposite. So we're going to put it to the test. Let's head out to the shop. We're going to build a vertical dipole and a 2 meter J-Pole. All right, so we got everything we need. We've got our plans. We've got some 14 gauge THHN wire. We've got a couple of uh, SO239 connectors from the old rat shack. I've got some ceiling tape, which we're gonna use as a dielectric on the homebrew ladder line. And then, you know, assorted tools and a soda bottle to use as also the dielectric on the ladder line. So let's get started. I cut the wire a little long and used the soda bottle as a spacer to make some ladder line that was supposed to be 300 ohms. I used short jumpers of stranded wire from the SO239 connector and twisted that around the ladder line. The analyzer was not happy. So the homebrew 300 ohm ladder line did not work so well. I had a resonant dip at about you know, 150 something. So we're going to try it with some real 300 ohm ladder line, but I don't have that much, so we'll see. I found some good looking plans for making a J-Pole from 300 ohm TV twin lead, but didn't have enough for the whole thing. I used a half wavelength radiator attached to the twin lead section with the measurements on the plans. So there they are, uh, two attempts at a J-Pole. One made with actual 300 ohm cable that I had laying around, one with homebrew cable that I made using spacings I found on the internet and stuff like that. Neither one works. This one was resonant at like 150 something. That's, uh, and this one right here, resonant somewhere around the uh, 130 something range. And I shortened the radiator and continued to shorten the radiator to the point where I knew it wasn't gonna work and it didn't. So that's kind of eliminating the J-pole at this point. Let's try the vertical dipole. I went back to the plans and soldered a 20 inch piece of wire to the center of an SO239 and soldered another 20 inch piece to a ring terminal. The ring terminal was secured to the connector with a number four screw. The hard part about a vertical dipole is reducing common mode currents by dressing the coax at a 90 degree angle to the dipole. I used some wood and a string to build a hanger. I also found some plans for making it dual banded by adding a 45 degree bend after six and a quarter inches. Maybe that will give it some UHF bonus points. After tuning, it was 1.5 to 1 across the 2 meter band. The analyzer I borrowed doesn't measure UHF. But we also have to give the J-Pole another chance, this time without anyone else's design. So Matthew came up with an idea. And, well, it works. Let's use some Romex. So I'm going to draw it over here. Total length of the black wire is 56 inches. And we'll get out my favorite tool that I use for building high band antennas, the yardstick or meter stick. And the matching section is uh, just under 15 inches. And as you can see, I put the Romex insulation between the two conductors. One is connected to the binding post there. So there's also a hairpin connection here. You'll notice that right there between the center and the ground and the ground side is connected and you'll see I burned it with the torch because my soldering gun sucks so be careful when soldering with the torch we'll draw this guy out here this is 15 inches you know this goes to center this goes to the ground side of the VL259 connector and then there's a three inch hairpin that's three inches connected from one side to the other and that gives us 1.5 to 1 across the two meter band now let's make it compete all right so the first thing we're going to do is get a baseline for the repeaters by doing it from the base station uh first we'll hit one super close uh, nine and a half miles over to tyler minnesota n0 ck test works just fine i won't bore you with the rest of them Here's the baseline test from my Cushcraft ARX2B on the roof with 50 watts from the ICOM 3230 dual bander. It's not a UHF antenna, so it didn't fare very well up there. Uh, let's get back outside. All right, so before we test it with that, we're gonna test it with this. And here are the results with the MFJ extended ducky antenna on my TYT handheld. 
All right, so with just the MFJ rubber ducky on the handheld, we got out to about 20 miles or so. Let's try it with the J-pole. I hung the J-pole from my 20-foot jackite pole with the tip at about 18 feet. I did make a bit of a choke with six turns of coax around 19 inches down from the feed point. I left that choke on for all the tests. Here are the results with the J-pole. So far, the uh, J-pole performs exactly as well as the rubber duck. Not a scientific test, I know, but uh, it's close. We're going to try the vertical dipole and see if it magically outperforms the J-pole or if it's about the same. Maybe it's just the 5 watts. We'll see. I hung the vertical dipole on the jackite pole with the top at the same position as the J-pole was. It definitely loses points for ease of deployment and packing space with that big piece of wood. As far as the results go, I had an anomalous hit on a repeater almost 60 miles away, but I couldn't bring it up on subsequent tries. Alex, kd 0 yh got on the air with me and gave me some quality reports from the nearby repeaters, so I decided to run a low power test into those repeaters with Alex as the judge. I put the J-Pole back up and ran it through the paces on low power as well. Here are the results. All right, so after some on-air tests, we discovered that the vertical dipole, not quite as good, as the Romex J-Pole. So this one gets recycled. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Join the resistance.